Howdy, House and House Users here, and today we are reviewing Lock Rowing the Last Dragon. So, Disney's first original um, anime movie since Moana. And, well, of course, was meant to come out last year, never ended up happening, yada yada yada, we all know the story. So, let's start off with the thing. I had no intention of watching this when I first heard about it. It, it didn't. It didn't grab my attention. To be honest, um, I just just didn't want to see it. But considering after everything in 2020 and the whole pandemic and the fact that there's not really much, uh, how little, how we're slowly building up to getting cinemas going again, even though this is both released in cinemas and on streaming service on Disney Plus, I thought, why not give it a shot? I mean, there was, there was really nothing else to see in the cinema. Okay, there is Tom and Jerry, but... Whatever interest I had is completely dead. I'm not going to see it in theaters. <sighs> anyway. But, um... So, I give this a go, and you know what? I enjoyed it. I really did. And it d definitely deserves the praise. I'm not going to spoil too much, but the story focuses on Raya... As she attempts to tries to um, find the, the last dragon known to known in the land of Kamandra, Sisu. Well, she does find out, but her hope is that Sisu, with her power, can eradicate the druin. The druin, a it is a mysterious cloud-like substance that can turn people into stone. She witnessed the druin's return, the druin's appearance when she when it took away her father. Huh, that tradition still away. And has been trying to find Sisu to return her everything. Unfortunately, Sisu's power isn't. Sisu can't turn, stop it straight away, as, as she needs the power of the orb, of the dragon orb. Which, do, when when the dream first appe uh, first appeared, is was broken to five pieces. Now, each being owned by the five lands of Karanja. Of Karanja. Oh, jeez. Losing it. Anyway, well. She has Rai has one piece. The others have found the remain land, five lands of, of, of the con of this place. So Sisu and so with the help, so she takes Sisu on a journey to reclaim the, the remain four pieces of the orbs. And me and other characters from the, from the respective from their respective lands who join Rai in a, in a cause, to reclaim their loved ones, who were taken away by the drone. Um, Zisu is pleased to meet new people, Raya is a bit... Well, Raya struggles to trust them. We learn that through the, through the main rival in this. Um, I think it's... I forget her name, but um, anyway, I think it's Ramandri. Who betrayed Raya, which caused the dream to reappear, reappear. So, that's all I can really describe. So, what, is, what works this? Well... The animation. I mean, the animation is unbelievable. It's and it, it captures the feel of Southeast Asia very well. And and you know, you can certainly see the the handling of Asian mythology in the, the, the designs of this world. It's it's a it's beautiful. It's oh yeah, her, her name's Romani. Um, and yeah, and it's and it's beautifully handled, honestly. The characters are all really likeable. Raya is a great protagonist, helped by Kelly Marie Tran's performance. And the other characters are all pretty good. I think the funniest is possibly the the baby she encounters and Well actually all the main all the people that Raya encounters are from the respective lands are really cool. There's the baby in the who is a bit of a thief. You have a a young boy who's a sh a shrimp restaurant who travel who who owns his own boat, and you have a warrior who who is turned to be the the scariest person in the world, but is really a big softy and is scared of living up to his land's expectations. Now he's the only one left. <laughs> yeah, he it's great. The intensity is great, especially with the action scenes. The as a, and with and that sort of applies into the handling the world building as well. Each area has their own distinctive culture, fighting style, and yeah, it's pretty, pretty, really good. 
the pacing is really well. He, it's not, it's not um, badly paced. It, everything flows on very naturally. It has time for the quiet moments. It has time for funny moments. But the humor is hit and miss. And you get, you see how, um, and pr everything progresses very smoothly. And the music by James Newton Howard. Now he's probably one of Disney. Whatever film he works on with Disney seems to be very underrated. Well, okay, I mean, Dinosaur sort of gets the rapid deserves, but stuff like um, Atlantis, Lost Empire, and Treasure Planet have some of the best scores in any Disney film. In fact, I feel like this is very, this film is very similar to Atlantis. But I'm glad, so, and I'm glad this is actually doing well, to be honest. Because only now Atlantis is getting appreciated for what it truly is, because back then a lot of people didn't really like it. I mean, I like I liked Atlantis from the very beginning, but I know a lot of people had tr took it took a while for them to like it. So I'm glad this is getting the love. But James Newton Howard's score is perfect. But what doesn't work? Well, first off, we have the Last Dragon herself, Sisu. She's fine, but it's clear this is she's an emulate. She's trying to well having some serious moments. She is trying to be the the nineties. It's clear Disney's using her as, as sort of the '90s comic relief that they had in their in their film in some of their, in their ren Renaissance period of the '90s. Like you can clearly see a bit of the genie and Mushu and her. Um, she is a good character, just she is the weakest when compared to everyone else in this. And okay, okay, the, look, you're going to see it in every Disney film. In fact, Disney. Make fun of it for Ralph Rex the Internet about their their it their similarities in different films, but you can definitely feel the similarities here when it's trying to be something different. I mean, look, despite the fact that she's not rule that her kingdom was basically wiped out when the Druid first appeared, Raya is still technically a princess, even though she's technically a chiefess. Yeah, you get that, you. Um. The baby character, you know, is clearly ripping off Jack Jack from The Incredibles. So I guess you can see a bit of the boss baby as well. Um, and then, look, the Droon's basic premise and the basic premise of trying to bring everyone back. It's M it's Avengers Endgame. I mean, you're ripping off. It's one thing to rip off. I mean, you're rip Disney, you're ripping off the highest grossing movie of all time, which you already own. Look, uh, I'm not, I'm not trying to be uh, cynical. It's just you can feel the aneurysm, the the similarities with these films, and it's not. Again, it's not awful. Just you feel it. But for what it is, I mean, Ryan the Last Dragon is unbelievable. It's a great movie, definitely worth taking a look at, and refreshing to see Disney do something different. And it's their first anime movie under their released under their new leadership, so, so it's good good to see. I'd say give it a shot and give it a go and enjoy yourself. You you really enjoy it. It's an eight out eight and a half out of ten has stars for me. So what's next for me? Um well actually I'm not entirely sure. Um I'll see what comes out next month. Give a look give a review of whatever I decide to look at, but I'm thinking maybe it's a good time to either try some Maybe look at, try and go away from recent releases and try and look at some old stuff. Maybe look a bit more into, maybe I can go back to some, review some video games after a while. Not entirely sure, but I've got options. And you know, there's something nice about options. But in the meantime, Hazmat's is out, and I'll see you for my next review. Ciao.